In this video, I'll be showing you how to maximize your silver at Elvia Biragidan. I'll go through which elixirs you should be using, which buffs you should take and why. I'll explain most of it as best as I can and then I'll show you a rotation and give you tips on how to optimize your grind. And at the end of the video, I'll also tell you what to expect from it as well. Okay, so let's start with buffs. So first of all, um, something they didn't mention in the previous video is that uh, the guild you're in could change a lot of how you grind. So like, first of all, let me show you this. So if you, if you have a guild, you press G, you go to the fourth tab, you got guild skills. If you have a guild which has all of the buffs, you can get certain passives from it so for example here it shows like all accuracy all ap max hp plus 100 damage reduction and evasion rate and that's not all you also get a, like a few buffs which you can ask from the guild which is uh 200 combat exp and 50 skill exp for two hours and you can also get 10 item drop rate for 2 hours from the guild as well. And uh, I know this is not relevant to the video right now, but you also can get a life skill plus 40%. So having a guild with all of those uh, already taken is uh, really important. Like it, it can help you quite a lot. Now, uh, now that we talked about the guild, let's see. We also have uh, a specific buff which uh, not a lot of people know of. And not a lot of people can get their hands easily on this. But if you have a horse with a Krogdalo set, 5 piece, uh, you can actually buff yourself using Roar, uh, if it's like a Krogdalo set of wind, and you get uh, AP plus 5 for uh, yourself for one hour. And if you're in a party, you're giving the buff to everybody in the party as well. Uh, it's up to 10 people. So uh, that's also something that you can use. Now I'm just gonna go through those that are like uh, less likely that people use them. So you know of them. And uh, if you got uh, any of this, you can use it in your grind. Uh, also, if we go here real quick in Heidel. Now this NPC, as far as I'm concerned, is just in Heidel. Okay, we're talking about Carolyn. Now, Carolyn also has a buff in exchange for uh, energy. Now, let's just take it real quick. So, if you go talk to Carolyn, Carolyn's kindness. 25 energy, you take this, and bam, it shows up here. It's only for 30 minutes. But, if you're gonna take it, and you got everything else prepared, you run up to your grind spot, and you have, like, let's say at least 25 minutes of this buff as you're fighting and it's uh, pretty good 10% critical hit damage is huge and it's for free like it's pretty much for free um so yeah this is another buff that a lot of people kind of forget about and it's really nice to min max your silver at your grind spot now i'm gonna start this by uh also prefacing the fact that uh pretty much i'm gonna talk about elvia Biragi then however this is a human grind spot like the mobs are considered humans so human damage affects them which uh, a lot of the stuff that i'm showing you right here in the beginning with the buffs you should use and uh which one should you use when is all gonna work no matter in which human uh spot you're gonna grind in so if you're gonna go grind and let's uh let's take a look over here if you're gonna go grind at bloody monastery uh they are also human you're gonna be uh using pretty much the same buffs in uh, this spot as well uh if we're gonna grind um let's say at the giants right we got primal giant post here if you go at the uh, Elvia Giants, you will also use the kind of the same buffs here as well. So, uh, if you're watching this video and you don't really grind the uh, Biragi Den, 
uh everything i'm talking about in the at least in the beginning is uh like it, it can work in any spot which has like human mobs uh you can also check if the mobs are human or not on gar mode as you can see uh here basically you hover your mouse here and uh it literally just shows you that uh uh, what, like what the spot is about it also has like a specific image for it and it just tells you if they're human or not uh, pretty, I'm, I'm not sure if there's an in-game way to figure this out like I, I haven't figured that out myself in game but I'm I'm using guard mode so I just look there and that's pretty much it um, now let me explain um, so it's so like if you got all of those buffs uh, another thing most people pick up here is also the church buff. We talked about it in the previous video with the uh, orc camp as well. Arson is our best friend. You talk to this guy. You got the church buffs here. Uh, if you somehow die, you might want to take protection. If not, you just take the blessing attack and that's it. You pick up either 120 minutes for 3 million or... 300 minutes for 10 million depending on how long you're gonna be grinding there uh i don't advise getting experience because experience is kind of expensive and the buff is very small so i don't think it's good to get this one personally i don't take it it's a waste of like it's a waste of three or ten million i know it's a very small amount of silver you're gonna make that in like the first mob you kill but I don't know. it adds up for sure anyway after you take the church buff so i'm gonna take it right here just so it shows up down there we're gonna pick up the first one there we go uh you we're gonna be talking about um elixir so like we are recap we got the church buff it's right here you get 8 ap8 uh all accuracy uh which can be pretty good for the accuracy at least if not for the ap if you're if you're capped at the monster zone, the AP won't really help you. So, you, you need to think if you're capped, you might not want to pick this one up because you're just like burning silver for nothing. Now, let me explain what I mean by capped, okay? We're gonna go. Uh, if you want, to, uh, I'll just, uh, you can write here, right here, monster zone. And then you pick the first one, monster zone info, okay? You click here, you go to Elvia Realm, because we're talking about Elvia Realm, Biragi Den right now. You click on Biragi Den on the list on the left, and then it's going to tell you uh, like a lot of useful stuff right here. Now, let's see what does it tell us. So, first of all, uh, this is the recommended AP and the recommended DP. So, basically, they are telling you... You can literally go, you, you don't even have season finished and you can start grinding here, which is uh, probably true if you're a witch or something, I don't know. Uh, but the thing is, uh, what we want to look at is again, right here, this button, view total stats, is really like what we need here. You gotta click on it and then it just switches to your uh, like total stats, of course. And you can see... The, there's 753 restricted okay like this just appeared right now it wasn't here before if you look at it it just tells you a few important stuff what we're looking at right now which is gonna be true for every elvia spot ever including giants and uh like bloody monastery because they're also like human spots that's why i'm mentioning those you are five percent capped on those spots like all elvia spots so that means that once you surpass 753 you only get five percent of that ap so again if you have 100 ap over this cap you only get five points for it so it's gonna be instead of 853 it's gonna be 758 now in my case right here it says 726 right i'm awakening land so i'm looking at 726 ap right now uh i don't have any buffs on other than what we've taken right now uh some of those buffs do not calculate towards this number inside the game 
so if you want a more accurate uh, description of your total AP, you would want to check uh, Garmod.com. You just add up all of your items on Garmod, and then you see how much AP you truly have. Uh, but like a, a good chunk of stuff will add up to this. So you can take this number as kind of a reference. Uh, right now, if uh, if I go on and um, check, I don't have the Exalted Vel's Heart on. Uh, if I turn it on, it gives me the buff, and uh, I believe it just resets here, so now it's 734, uh, for example. Now, it doesn't calculate everything we're getting from Velshar for some reason, because, um, like, it calculates the shit AP, that's, like, the number 3 there, um, but it doesn't calculate the all AP plus 8 as well. So, basically, just uh, add 6 here. We had 728. Uh, now it's like uh, 734, right? Uh, if it would add the all AP on it as well, like the buff we get from it, we would have like uh, 740, um, 742, right? So basically, not everything counts in the game, uh, like God right here. Um, but yeah, the idea is if you gonna reach this point where you have 753 like i'm like 734 right now with just like literally nothing uh if i turn my vel on and i just put on one buff i'm already past that point right um you want to be looking at certain buffs which give you the like the specific mob type damage which in this case is human and what i'm talking about is of course elixir of indignation for elixirs so if you look here elixir of indignation is um giving you a shit ton of stuff like this is uh basically giant's drop on steroids if you're past the cap i feel like it's ac actually i'll take that back this one is better than giant's drop in like uh human spots even if you are not capped. So, like, if you're under 753 for Biragi, Elixir of Indignation is just a better Giant's Drop in this case. And let's see why. So, if you look at Elixir of Indignation right here, it gives you 25 human damage. Okay? 25, as opposed to 10 AP from Giant's Drop. If you look, Giant's Drought has uh, extra all special attack damage, plus 10, and here on the Elixir of Indignation, we have extra special attack damage, plus uh, 12. So you get two more with this one. You also get the uh, basic stuff like movement speed and critical uh, plus 3, which uh, Giant's Drought also has. You also get the uh, 200 stamina as well. However, Elixir of Indignation will reduce, uh, like, the all damage reduction and all evasion and your HP. So, you need to be cautious with that. If you're dying in a spot, you might want to, like, be cautious using this one. Because you're gonna be more vulnerable. If you're dying in a spot and you're capped, you might as well use Giant Strat. If you're, like, like I don't know, like, really bad, you got, you're getting hit... And they deal a shit ton of damage, I don't know, just use this one instead. Just start with this, and once you start, stop dying, you can start using this one. Uh, if you are not capped, you will use uh, Frenzy's uh, Draught most of the times, uh, especially in places where, uh, like, if, if, if they deal some good damage to you, Frenzy is really good for survival, it gives you, like, uh, HP recovery on hit, uh, again, you have 35 monster damage, you get 10 critical from this one as well. Uh, so, like, the buff from earlier was also 10 crit. That's crazy. It's almost... It's the same as a, a Frenzy, with the, just, like, just that one stat. Um, you get a, a, a good chunk of accuracy on it as well. Again, stamina and some weight as well. So, again, we're gonna, we're gonna just make sense of this right now. First... If you're capped, you want to use Elixir of Indignation. Elixir, like Giant's Draught, is only going to be used if you die a lot. Because it doesn't reduce your stats, even though I still think you should just use this one. Uh, 
if you are not capped, so like you are not a 753 here, then you are probably gonna want to use uh, Frenzy's Draught. Now, Frenzy's Draught, you need to be careful because it gives you a lot of monster AP. It's 35. At 734 right here, if I use a Frenzy's Draught, it will go like up to 769, which is already past the cap. So basically, I'm not making use of any of that AP. Uh, you also want to check the same stuff with the foods, and I'll, I'll talk about foods right now. You got Exquisite Cron Meal. Now, for Exquisite Cron Meal, uh, again, if you are capped, you want to use Exquisite Cron Meal for a few reasons. First of all, it gives you back attack, critical hit damage, uh, and ignore all resistance, um, together with uh, a little bit of uh, AP, some accuracy, and so on. It will also like uh, give you some uh, uh, critical hit and movement speed, which in combination with uh, like say Elixir of Indignation and stuff, uh, you will uh, probably reach like your caps for like critical and uh, movement speed. Uh, so like if you're getting past 753, just use Exquisite Cron Meal. If you're really close, you use exquisite cron meal if you're far below you will use simple cron meal now this is just for elvia spots because again if you see here it says only five percent of the exceeded ap will be applied so if you get 100 extra ap then this number again only five will be added okay so this is it with the buffs like food buffs uh, do you only have like about two options there there might be like uh, uh other like niche options but uh most people will be going with either exquisite or simple cron depending on what their uh total ap is so now let's talk about uh perfumes and stuff so first of all we got a bracing spirit perfume elixir first uh this one is really cheap even in this version like you don't really have to buy bracing in this case i have bracing uh spirit perfume but just spirit perfume will be pretty much the same except it doesn't have five monster damage now if you're capped you don't need the five monster damage however if you are not capped you will need the extra monster damage and it's really good to have and the elixir costs just three mil so it's like 10 mil to buff up now I recommend you use this no matter what like I, I put the other options here just for the sake of having them here but just don't use them please <laughs> like even if you're the best player in the world I mean probably like I don't know let's say the best most cracked player in the world just might be able to pull something out I'm not sure I, I think even then it, it's not worth it and why do I say that? Because if you look here, Spirit Perfume is just 3.4 million a piece, right? But BAM! Elixir of Deep Sea is 28 freaking million a piece. You need to pop three of those per hour, bro. You would have, like, you would have to make up with all those stats on here, which are amazing stats. Like, this is a really good Elixir. This is the best elixir, by the way. You would have to make up 90 million extra that hour just because you popped this elixir. This elixir won't make you extra 90 mil. At least, again, if you're not like the craziest player ever. So just don't buy this. And even more, don't buy this one. Like, this one is also 28 million. Uh, I'm having an event one. If you have an event one like I do, you can use it because you can't sell it. So make make use of it, all right? But if you if you have a base one which you can sell, it's also about 28 million. So let me just go and uh, search perfume of courage on uh, on the market and show you. But again, perfume of courage is not worth it. Like I it's just way too expensive so like right now it's 29 million and it's just two pieces and it just keeps getting expensive like you and, and 
it's really not worth it. Like, you, you want to make up that much money to, like, just cancel the price of the item and also get some on top as well. And, uh, like, if you have some, you might as well either sell them or, I don't know, if you really don't care about the money from them, just, I don't know, keep them in a corner and wait, I don't know, for dark days or something. I have no idea. I, personally, I sell them. They're super expensive. Uh, this one in particular is not really useful if you're capped uh, as well. So, if we go back to the Monster Zone info at Biragi, uh, if you are capped again, past 753, if you use Perfume of Courage, is just not gonna do anything like you you get some attack speed and cast speed and a little bit of hp it's not really gonna help even if you're dying that 200 hp won't really save you most of the time so i just advise against uh perfume of courage and deep sea at birag okay if you're doing giants maybe maybe there's a, a chance you might use elixir of deep sea even though I, I still kind of doubt it'll make up for like at least 90 million or more. Okay, so like basically this is how your uh, buffs are gonna look like. So right here I got the buffs from the guild that I talked about earlier. So we got some 200 uh, combat EXP, 50 skill EXP, item drop rate plus 10. We also have uh, bravery. This is the church buff, right? Um, and this is the buff from the NPC earlier, 10 critical damage. Uh, I also have a book of combat active. Uh, if you have a book of combat, you can always pop this one up. Um, if you have a lot of them, of course. If you only have one, you might want to keep it for uh, certain zones. Like Orc Camp is much better for EXP. If you're planning to level up for some reason, might as well start using it when you grind at Orc Camp. Um, same with all sorts of like EXP um, scrolls. So if you have like 200 EXP scrolls like this, or uh, you have like all sorts of 200 EXP scrolls like this, 300 EXP scrolls, uh, yellow 200 EXP scrolls for two hours, you wanna uh, like keep those for uh, better spots. Like you, you might want to keep them for uh, uh, Gaifin under for uh, like or camp those like some of the best spots for EXP. If you're a noob, a good spot for EXP is Nagas. So just don't waste those at Biragi if you have a few of them. I would use them because I have hundreds of them, and at this point I'm level 64. As soon as I hit 65 level, literally doesn't matter for me anymore. Uh, at level 65, I'm just gonna get rid of this bullshit on Y, so uh, here at goals, you get at 65, you get a 3 Kapoti. I just wanna get rid of this shit from here, and that's it. So, uh, level doesn't really help you much. Now, um, we talked about buffs, uh, we gonna just, uh, like, this is an example, so I'm capped, and for me, the buffs will look something like this, so... All of those that I explained earlier, you gotta pop an Elixir of Indignation, Exquisite Cron Meal, Bracing Perfume as well, and there we go. Those are kind of the buffs. Uh, I also have them set up in the Fairy, and I just press one button. If you have a Fairy and you have, uh, again, what what the fuck is it called? It's um, Continuous Care, right? So, like, Continuous Care helps you out. You just put the items in here, and you just, like, because it detects the items you have in your inventory. You just, like, click on them, and just press one button, and right-click this. It even says here, right mouse button to toggle. And it'll just pop every single thing. And when it runs out, it pops it again, unless you stop it. So, this is really good to have. Also, of course, just use as many stuff you have for uh, item drop rate. So you go here. Uh, soon, the item drop rate gauge, like the item collection increase gauge, will appear automatically when you go into a monster zone. They announced this. It's gonna be coming soon. It's gonna be really good. You don't have to turn it on yourself. When you enter the zone, it's just gonna pop up. Now, if you 
put if you hover your mouse on it right now there's a, a drop event like right here you can see 100 item drop rate uh it says on the gauge my total drop rate right now is 182 so i have 82 base plus 100 from the event now make sure you don't pass like uh, 300 unless they raise the cap to 400 like sometimes when they give you 100 percent they raise the actual max cap of 300 up to 400 because like you you would get to 300 just with the buff they're giving you sometimes it's like right now if i pop a scroll i'm almost at 300 with just popping the scroll and that's it if i do level two let's let's do level two see 282 so just pop as many like drop uh stuff you have again the, the guild has one uh and uh you're good to go now i also want to mention uh if you talk to black spirit if you want to uh you can just exchange uh like energy for some small real small buffs however if you give 50 energy for uh like or 100 energy for one hour because this is like the better version you give 100 energy you get 20 combat exp for that hour which i think it's like slightly better than what the church one gives you the church gives you 15 i think in exchange for like 3 million or like 10 million so just uh just get the one from black spirit maybe if you're gonna grind and you're not gonna use the energy might as well right um so this is like basically most of the buffs you can use and get that are gonna help you in any way uh now i also want to mention if we go back to monster zone info biragi uh you got a few quests here you might want to pick those up so if you're gonna go grind there just right click on the quest or like sorry left click on the quest and it will just uh go like it will just um path you towards the npc that gives you the quest uh there's a chance the npc doesn't show up unless you're on elvia servers so you you might want to switch to elvia before uh actually pathing to the npc so just make sure you're on elvia when you path because there's a chance the npc might not show up unless and if you got if you got there and you don't see the npc then just go out of elvia it, it really depends like the game is really fucked when it comes to this uh but yeah and other than that uh there's also uh like a quest if you go to glish and like right here in the middle where you see uh caesar right it's like where caesar is you can go downstairs so this is glish right you go to caesar you go downstairs through the door and if you're on Elvia, there's an Elvia NPC elf right there. She gives you a quest. If you complete the quest, you will get a box. And if you open the box, you will get the Elvia buff. Like the ones, the one you drop that makes you deal a shit ton of extra damage to mobs. You can get it like before you even start grinding. So like if you want to just go in and start your uh, hour with that shit, I believe it's like one per uh, day. So like you do that quest once a day and your first hour can be like literally insane. You can just start in the first second with the weapon buff and everything. And uh, yeah, some people like to do that. I personally, I don't go that far. The drop uh, for the buff is really high. It also like another thing, the the weapon uh, buff also uh, depends on your drop rate so like if your drop rate is really high you get even higher chance to drop it but even if it's like half of what i'm having right now you would still drop a shit ton of them like they made sure you would my worst hours ever sure i only got two buffs but it that rarely ever happens most of the hours i've had uh, were like three weapon buffs which is the maximum you can have now uh i would like to also talk about uh, the alchemy stone now we're going into items so um alchemy stone i'd say is the first thing you don't necessarily need to have an exalted vel's heart it's really expensive especially if you're a beginner 
you want to work towards it this is the maximum you can get you buy vel's heart and then you buy the stuff to upgrade it uh so obviously it gives you a lot of shit there's no need to explain it you have a whole list here you get ap accuracy ignore all resistance you get all resistance you get less damage from mobs attack speed and cast speed and 3 ap and 4 dp literally insane everything else is uh pretty good as well like you can also get a shining uh like polished shining uh, destruction alchemy stone which is like the rarest shit ever and it could be better than this uh but like that's that's insane level of shit so like vel is is what most people are expected to have uh if you don't have vels uh you can also get like cheap versions of uh like also weaker versions okay but like a little bit of a buff you know first of all we got destruction spirit stone like in the last video it's really cheap 900k silver you can buy a shit ton of those probably on the market and uh it gives you a little bit of a buff a little bit of ap a little bit of accuracy a little bit of attack speed a little bit of a cat speed so yeah if you want you get this uh just so you have something and uh it's a little bit of something okay uh, if you've done the Ulukita questline, you will also have a Thor's Power Stone, which is also pretty good. Now, uh, I'd suggest you use this if, uh, like, unless, like, this is a, a slightly better version of, uh, the Destruction Spirit Stone. And it also has, like, more, um, durability, and you can also repair it. So, a Thor's Power Stone is, uh, literally cheap. Uh, like, sorry, it's, uh, it's, it's free, not cheap. It's free. You get it from the quest line. You do Ulukita quest line. If you manage to finish it, you get this. It also gives you one AP as well. So for a free item, I'd say it's pretty good. Uh, it's clearly better than the destruction spirit stone. So yeah, just go with that. Um, now another thing that i want to be talking about is uh the artifact set now if we look here this is what you would like to have this is the ideal version of an artifact set that you would have like in most if not like sorry if in all human spots it's called uh, the wild humans and uh basically you get you go with the uh, lightstone of fire blight three of them and iridescent lightstone one and that creates the set the wild humans now this set gives you literally like double the human damage so instead you get like 24 because it's like you get four from the light stones right there so it's four plus four plus four and then it gives you like the set combination also gives you extra 12 so you get a total of 24 um as far as i'm concerned so this is why uh, this set is really good and it's the best in slot for this. Now, this set can be a little bit expensive, like, but the good part is that artifacts don't break. There's nothing bad that can happen with them unless you delete them yourself. And uh, again, you just buy those once and you, get, you have them for life. And a lot of spots have like human damage, so uh, you would like to have this in the future as well. So just get this one with two Mars artifact of extra AP monsters and uh, you're good to go. Uh, if you don't have the money and you don't want to invest the money in that, especially if you're uh, not capped there, so like you, you're running under, you use the same Mars artifacts as strike a HP, uh, sorry, extra AP against monsters, um, two of them. And inside, you just add like some monster damage stuff. So, uh, let's see, where do we got it? It's right here. Uh, this is an example. So, we got like Lightstone of Fire Predation. And um, we got two of them. And you get like uh, two uh, Mars Artifact Extra AP against monsters with two Predations. And uh, you will be okay for for a while. And this is like real cheap. We're talking like 20 mil for the whole combo. That's like the very cheapest version of like some extra AP you can get. And the, but you use this only, only if you are under the cap. 
we talked about earlier okay if you're past the cap you really want to get into the like human damage one okay the human damage one is the best if you're past the cap okay so like this is basically it with the artifacts uh there's probably no better combo for uh for human spots like uh, as far as i'm concerned not even the best general combo is better at human spots now uh i would also like to mention uh there's um like those are my uh add-ons here let me show you uh basically i use those for uh human spots uh i didn't make this add-on page myself i just took it from the land discord a long time ago so uh i'm not sure if it's actually up to date it's actually really hard for awakening land to find like actual add-on pages that are like up to date and stuff but i feel like this one makes a lot of sense because uh the the way the combo goes you're gonna be getting uh first of all like um some extra human damage and critical heat damage because uh and, and with this one you're also getting a little bit of extra ap as well so it makes a lot of sense when you use this you get buffed and uh you get like the buffs for critical hit and human and then uh as you keep going with the with the combo you just uh debuff the monsters like this is an aoe so you reduce the dp and stuff uh, this one is an aoe so you reduce dp it, it also increases your attack speed um same with furor if you're gonna be finishing monsters off and stuff or like uh you you just got close and you're on cooldown or something you just use furor which is basically your like kind of like basic attack uh, just to debuff them and get some attack speed as well so like the more you hit the faster you will you, you hit right you, you hit twice and you're like 10 percent faster so basically this is like the general logic of this you want to debuff using your uh, aoe skills and you want to buff with your uh, buff skills like if you have skills that give you buffs you use those and you also add some extra buffs on them with the add-ons and so on and uh this one I don't really uh like I, I I use it only occasionally. Um and I also have it set on monster AP uh because of uh like what I had before and stuff. Like it, this this one is uh, also like pretty like occasionally it's good. It's kind of slow of a spell though. Um but yeah, with this one, you, you can also like hit it for the critical hit rate and stuff. Like you, you can set up uh, four buffs on this one as well. And you can use it as a finisher if the mobs uh, just barely are alive. Uh, you, you might want to set it up on your uh, bar and shit. So you have like, for, for example, here I have it on number three. And this is how the spell looks. It's pretty cool so this is basically add-ons for lan if you uh play any other class you might want to check your uh discord for your specific add-ons there's like 50 classes or something in the game so it's gonna be really hard for me to give you add-ons for your specific class and uh, not a lot of people play awakening lan either so i'm not sure if anyone's gonna even uh care about this at all anyway um there's also like a crystal set i'm gonna be putting it on the screen right here um basically you have a human damage crystal set which is like very good uh it's also quite expensive as well and some crystals are scarce so if you check the market there's a chance that you actually don't have uh those crystals for sale so one thing you would want to do is uh just pick some different uh crystal page something that can that you can get your hands off in case you can't get your hands off on those for example in my case uh i didn't make this page yet so i have uh this page for back attack if you manage to do a lot of back attack this is actually the best combination here also i have this other page which is like the general page this is like the 
the combination I'm using uh, when I'm in, in spots where I can't really like uh, reliably back attack. So you got uh, you got those. Those are like best in slot uh, crystals for LAN at least. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're best in slot for a few classes as well, maybe all of them. Uh, I know that uh, there are some classes that have some variations with the crystals, but uh, you can also check that on your class specific discord just to make sure or ask somebody else that plays your class and see what they have. Um, basically, that's that's basically the only thing you can do. Um, but yeah, those are the crystals that I use again, and um, they're, they're literally the best you can get right now for uh, Awakening Land. Uh, other than this, you would also want to get the hand buff as well, which uh, I also presented in the previous video. Um, but yeah, basically, if you have a camping tool, uh, which of course it's bought with the uh, pearls pay to win i know uh you can just set it up if you got book of old moon which is extra pay to win you add it up to the camping tool and you can buy a villa scroll buff literally from far away normally you would have to go all the way there purchase a villa invitation and then you would be able to but with this you can just click here for example and bam we got it and now it just shows up here now again like i said in the previous video if you want to go and uh, grab it you can also grab it on the map right here uh if we go right here this is shakatu you also gotta wait where's the okay there it is I don't know why the icon is just it's not loading right now we got the lohan villa which is like just about um let's say it's east of shakatu kind of maybe like northeast of shakatu and basically it it says right here scroll body enhancement if you get the villa invitation for lohan's villa you can also get the body enhancement buff so you can go get it you, the invitation is for seven days you can talk to the npc get the buff for a few hours go grind and get back here but it's a it's a long distance so you better be prepared for this if you if you're gonna go for it okay like it's lagging a little bit right now for some reason but this is the distance you would have to go and you, you can probably uh go here um through like through the well like just go from valencia go here and just either run back to valencia and teleport to heidel i'm not sure that that should be faster but yeah this is this is you'd have to run in, in case you want the villa buff every single time uh i'm not sure if you don't have old moon you can get the invitation and i think for seven days you can actually pick up the buff from uh here as well if you don't have this okay the secret book of old moon but uh yeah i'm, I'm not really sure of that because i haven't tried it myself i'm just assuming it might work so okay just don't don't listen to me on this one maybe anyway this should be uh it for like the buffs and stuff and items that you need okay now so we're here at biragi den uh Obviously, right now we're not on Elvia, so you don't see anything right here. But uh, I just want to explain a few things about how should you be grinding here and what the mechanic is. Uh, however, the mechanic is pretty easy, so don't expect much. I'll just give you like more uh, general grinding tips. So what I'm going to be explaining here will uh, apply to every single grind spot you are gonna be fighting in at least if it's an elvia grind spot let's say um in most cases most things that i'm gonna be uh like addressing here are gonna be true there might be exceptions so uh just think for yourself you know um 
there are spots and spots in the game but here we go first of all i'm gonna start with obviously if you've never done this before you want to press this green button near your uh, mini map it says lvr realm if you hover over it once you click on it it just switches you to lvr realm it's gonna take you like 10 seconds no problem just um get it over with and you're gonna be seeing the monsters and there we go there they are Every the scenery changed everything looks freaking cool and the monsters are there now where are we exactly let's see on the map so basically this is where we are so to the left we got the biragi den uh node to the right we have this tower here but i'd say the easiest way to figure is if you look at the river there's literally just four trees here just like sitting in the river basically on the map like a, you could you can totally just see those four trees here as like a, like a point to know where you're going so if you go at the four trees you just press on land to the left of the river and that's where you're gonna be sitting at now I start here because this is where I'm leaving my horse. So like my horse is gonna be here. Uh, you can put it a bit closer. The mobs are not gonna come after your horse. However, uh, it's probably risky to live it like this sometimes. Because there's gonna be dumbasses that are gonna come through there. And they're just gonna pull the mobs on your horse. And if they really want to, they, your horse will die. So if you feel like that might happen, it didn't happen to me because most people don't grind Biragi. But if you feel like that might happen, you can probably leave your horse somewhere around here. And it's not that huge of a difference. You'll only meet your horse like probably twice, maybe thrice uh, an hour. Uh, it really depends on your weight limit, but... You can leave it there and it's just as fine it's just a little bit further it's it's not really that obstructed uh, like right here could he, he could just die so it's up to you it did never happen to me but some douchebag just might do it you know okay now that we know where we starting we know where to leave the horse you can take your tent buff here as well you can set your tent right here for example it doesn't really matter um, I'm just gonna like pop some buffs and stuff and just for the sake of it, it doesn't really matter either. I just uh, put on all of my buffs, I put my artifacts on. Uh, we have the church buff, the villa buff. Uh, the, the buff from the NPC that gives us crit ran out, but it doesn't really matter because uh, you already know what you need to do with the buffs. Like here I'm just gonna be talking straight about like uh, fighting mechanics and stuff. So first of all, at Biragi, you have a simple mechanic. Basically, as you're killing mobs around here, it's like you just go around, there's those guys right here. Uh, you're gonna kill them. Bam, they're dead. Awesome. Uh, also, let me get my pets to loot as well. Don't forget your pets, guys, okay? Uh, you can get uh, all of the buffs from earlier, as many as you can, and uh, to the best of your abilities. And then, uh, I'm also gonna, like, as you're going through here, and killing the mobs just like this, no, like, right now I'm not hurrying, I'm just trying to explain as I'm going, so we're going slow. And you can see Biragi sets alert level to first stage. So this is the mechanic here. Basically, sometimes based on your drop rate, as you're going through the monster zone, you will see that message pop up. And as you keep going and as you keep fighting, that message will keep uh, increasing the alert level stage. So like right now we're stage one. And if we keep killing, it's gonna be uh, stage 2. Right now, I'm not really going into a rotation. I'm just explaining. So, we're just killing mobs and eventually it will be stage 2. And uh, one thing that's important to note. Uh, 
every single stage has a small cha change that's gonna happen on uh like uh, as you're fighting the mobs so uh, i'm not exactly sure which one's which and uh, like how bad is it but uh the gist of it is that they detect you faster um they also uh get more aggressive uh they get a little bit uh stronger as well i think uh and also uh at some point more mobs will just spawn so as you're fighting there's gonna be some mobs that just spawn and just start attacking you um and ultimately after you just keep on and killing and going through your rotation and stuff you will eventually get into stage uh, four at the like i think towards the end of stage four uh you will spawn the boss here which is um yeah literally the thing you're looking for like you the ideally you want to kill as fast as possible and as many mobs as possible with a high drop rate and uh this will just go from stage one to stage four real quick and the boss will spawn and basically the sp the boss will drop you uh some uh, goodies including a key and that's literally what you're looking for it's the key the key depending on what rarity the key is like you got the, the super rare red key you got the like rare uh, silver key and then you got the very common like bronze key or something now um they're com called like glimmering something keys i don't remember exactly but you can see it in the loot table uh, i will also explain a little bit more later on but basically with those keys you will go and interact with uh something on the map and you will get like extra drops from it so uh basically you want to get uh like a lot of those keys and like higher grade of them as well now as i killed here we got stage one and we also drop our uh weapon buff this is above the drops in El every elvia spot when it drops as soon as possible you want to take it this buff makes you significantly stronger so right now i can just like delete those mobs no problem so i'm basically it takes me one skill to kill every single one of them you can kill them even with basic attacks at this point they're that weak uh, it's gonna last for 10 minutes and then it's gonna have a 10 minute cooldown so you can only have the buff three times an hour and you're gonna be an op god when that happens now another thing to explain um as you're going through and your level increases when the boss spawns you will want to just leave it for a moment let it spawn and move back to it and attack it after it spawned don't wait for the boss to spawn so say right now the boss just got announced and it's gonna spawn like right here he's gotta be like right here you don't wait for him you're sitting here and like oh i can't wait for the boss to spawn no you just go right here you kill those mobs here you go and kill those mobs here and now the boss is up and you kill it and you start like fighting it right don't sit and wait ever just try to kill stuff around and go back for the boss the boss is also aggressive like he will go after you uh he has a decent range so he'll it, it, like say if uh, the boss is where i said so like around here right if the boss spawns here and you're just by this fence here he will probably just come and attack you like we probably don't even have to go uh like all the way back so it's not even, like it's not a stationary stuff like he will go after you now if you put your horse uh there you can get your 10 buff there and another good spot for your 10 buff is like you can actually place your tent here as well um this is a rotation which i've uh seen a uh, pavel do which is like one of the best uh pve nova awakening grinders um he says this rotation specifically uh kind of like nets him more um trash loot and stuff so i'll believe him 
uh, the rotation is uh, a little bit complicated in a sense that it really depends how strong you are. Like your rotation can be like huge or it could be like pretty small because you don't deal enough damage. So you're just kind of getting, uh, you know, you're, you're just kind of just going in a small circle around here. Uh, but like the gist of it is uh, as you're going around. So like right now we kill the mobs here. But uh, the general idea is you, you would start somewhere around here, maybe. It doesn't really matter. It's a circle, okay? You can start wherever you want. You can start from the gate where I was at. Actually, you know what? Let's just go straight to the gate and start from there. Because maybe that way it's less confusing, right? So this is basically where we left our horse. Right there. We got the tent as well. We buffed up and we're starting. And now... We're killing those guys over here to the left. We kill the guys to the right. Uh, we kill the groups at the doors here. And you just keep going. Like this is uh, this is a part you will be uh, going through a lot. Now, the this is going to be like a rotation, which is like if you're clearing super fast. Okay, like we're talking like Godspeed. Uh, if you're a Zerker, if you're a Nova, if you're a, I don't know, maybe some Musa or something uh, you're gonna be clearing super fast especially with the weapon buff so you're gonna be going this way uh we went uphill from there right you want to kill everything in this camp here just go around leave those guys there kill the guys in the middle as fast as you can just go up uh, the mobs will follow you so you don't really need to look back for every single mob this is a tip I, I'd say is for every single grind spot. Don't look behind for mobs. If a mob escaped with 10 HP, fuck it. Don't go behind and use a skill on it. It's a waste of time. You're gonna have like five more mobs that that kill could have killed. Uh, like that, that, that skill could have killed, sorry. Uh, so just use that skill on something useful. Um, as you can see, we, we are already on level 2. Uh, eventually, I think at level 3, we'll start seeing some mobs with some white text above their head. Those guys just randomly spawn and attack you. Um, now we're just going back down. We're killing some mobs here. There's a dude here probably wants duel for spot or some shit. I hope not. Um, and now you went down the hill here, right? So as you went down the hill... You're just gonna kill to the the left side, and then you're just gonna go right side. And now we're at the fence we were at earlier. So like you went down the hill, we went right side. We went between the fences here. Now this is if you're super fast, like I'm talking about like giga fast, okay? You kill those guys here. Those guys as well. Then... There's this tower thingy here. You destroy it. You kill those guys as well. The guys in front. And now we're just circling back. Now you want to start uh, going back. Where, where we were at earlier. So here we kill this. This is where I said that you can place your uh, tent if you want to. If you need to. Now we're going back through the fences. We're going to pick the right side where we didn't kill the mobs yet. It will look like this, so it's gonna be pretty empty. Um, I'm going super slow, so the mobs spawn a lot faster here in the video. But uh, if uh, I would go super fast or like switch to the Nova or something, uh, it would be pretty much empty on the left side anyway. So you kill those guys to the right side, and here we're at those crossroads here. We kill everything in front, and then we go to the right here. So like you can see, we went right side. We're killing everything in those camps. Awesome. Those guys as well. We got the alert stage level 3. So um, maybe now you will be able to see like uh, the differences between the stages. I'm not uh, entirely sure uh, if it's stage 3 or stage 4 for the extra mobs. Uh, but... Um, basically that's what happens like they they just have like different behaviors uh which like they the 
mobs are getting more aggressive as the stage goes up basically and then they get back up and in the end the backup didn't work uh, well we have a boss that's basically it so we went down from there and uh now we're going to the left so like as you see you came here you can go left or right you're gonna go left and as you're going left you, f you just go along this fences here and uh after the tree you just kill the mobs and then you just keep walking forward you got mobs here as well you kill the guys here as well and trust me it looks pretty long like it's a long as a uh, rotation but some people are so crazy fast you wouldn't believe it until you saw it they actually do clear all of this shit now obviously i'll also show like a smaller variations for people that aren't that fast or like your class is either not too good uh you're just starting out so you're not super fast you know and now we're back where we kind of started right so like this is where we began right there is our horse and uh, our tent right so this is where we were so i'll just uh go through it again but this time we're gonna be like uh also making a smaller rotation so if you're going as slow as i'm going right now you're just gonna go this way and then you're gonna go this way you're gonna kill around this uh like fire camp or something and you can already start like rotating downwards like you go here you kill this you kill everything that's following if there's a lot of mobs following you not just one or two you can kill them just don't turn around for uh mobs that are just like randomly chasing you like here it was like four mobs that's okay if it's just one guy like right there you don't want to kill him uh because you're wasting time with him you you could go in that one second you could kill another group of mobs that's exactly how it goes like right here um so basically we went down that's the tower from earlier this is the place where you put the um, tent you're going through the fences here now this is already a lot uh smaller because uh, we didn't go all the way up there. Uh, you can see the mobs are all dead there. Because we just recently killed them. So this uh, rotation is smaller. Uh, they didn't spawn yet. Now we're just gonna go straight through. And uh, basically the rotation is just uh, quite similar from here on. Basically you go the same way. Uh, you can also do some variations uh, here as well. It really depends like. You can actually just kill the guys here in front and everyone inside and just jump over that uh, hut over there and the mobs should be uh, spawned already. It really depends like on your clear speed. Also, if you do the whole rotation and your clear speed is not great, that doesn't really matter. As long as you're not like, I don't know, cucking somebody that's actually... Uh, grinding here it's actually fine like as long as look, look that guy was uh it says something like uh, hunter above his name with white letters uh that was the guy from the uh like alert message basically he just spawned here and there's gonna be plenty of those guys um so yeah you you're gonna kill those guys here with the huts and uh now you can um well i got cc right now uh, you can just like drop off here for example and there's gonna be those guys here you can kill them and uh, forward here a few more guys and we're pretty much back to the horse see and then we go again through the doors here we keep going up we're back at the campfire here this is like a you know there's two towers and a campfire in the middle um and so on so basically this is like a smaller rotation uh you can just play around with it it's a circle you can either make a like a the big circle or just find smaller ones but the, the whole idea when you're grinding is that you want to grind in a circle so like whenever you get to the 
beginning where you started drawing your circle while killing, uh, the mobs are already respawned there. That's the whole gist of it. That's why people say BDO is about the uh, killing in circles, is because it's the most efficient way. Obviously, this is gonna be like some freaking really scuffed surf circle or like an oval if there's gonna be some like, you know, mathematicians in there, you know, fixing their glasses, actually. But, um, no, it's it's pretty much just like, it, it, it's whatever, you, you call it whatever you want. But basically, yeah, that's that's kind of the thing. Also, look, this guy, Bounty Hunter, see, Bounty Hunter, they, they just hired Bounty Hunters to kill you. So that's kind of the the gist of uh, like how this works you're just going in those circles you make the circle like the bigger one or the smaller one i showed you um it really depends you can always like extend or like shorten that uh the you can extend the last one or you can shorten the first one and the, either way it's gonna be better um now one thing i can recommend Okay, so if you're fully buffed, you're, you completely understand, uh, like, what, how, how to be fully buffed, and you're here, and you, you just started your hour, you have everything popped. One important tip, like, this is, uh, this is, like, general grind tips, okay? Like, grinding in circles is, it is gonna happen in every single spot. This, what I'm talking about, is gonna work in every single spot. So, like... One general tip is try to position yourself in such way so that you hit the monsters from behind. When you hit monsters from behind, you're just like much stronger. Like right now I'm buffed up and I'll just charge in and I just hit every single one of them from behind. And like some of them died in one skill. Uh, while uh, like generally speaking, most of the times... Uh, if you don't have the weapon buff, they if they're facing you, they won't die. So those guys right now are just kind of like facing me. Uh, my skill is pretty strong. I'm not sure if it's not going to kill them, but let's see. So see, this is my one of like, I think it's my strongest skill. And it took like just two thirds of their HP when they're facing me. But if we do it again. So like we're gonna we're gonna dash real quick and just hit them from behind again. So we're gonna go here. I'm just gonna wait uh, out my skill. And if you're gonna go hit them from behind, the, they'll uh some some of them will just die because of it. So like right here. So some of them just died. I think I actually just went uh, a little bit overboard. I think uh, I, I held the uh, the combo too much. So I think it just did another skill. Let's just try somewhere else with uh, with some other uh, mobs. Um, some mobs that I can actually hit from behind, please. Okay, there we go. So those guys, see the small ones died instantly, uh, just from the basic spell, while uh, the big ones like there, that guy died. This guy almost died just from that one spell. So, if you hit them from behind, if you place yourself behind them, it's just significantly better. So, just make sure you try to position yourself behind them. Be super quick. So, like, the way I do it with the LAN, right? I just literally double dash behind them like this, and they don't have time to react. And they're almost dead, if not dead, by the time they turn around. So, that means I kill them significantly faster. There we go. They didn't get the time to just turn around, so basically they just went freaking... Uh, and they went and died, pretty much. Another thing that um a lot of people just don't do, practice your combos. Like, it's, it's a little bit annoying. Sometimes the combo is really difficult. You can most likely find multiple combos you can use in PvE. Longer combos, shorter combos on your uh, class discord but the gist of actually grinding faster is also knowing your combo and uh like for lan you you just got like a a pretty easy combo uh for pve so basically it starts with like um it's gonna look something like this 
Bam, 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 bam. Something like this. That that's that's an example of a combo. Now this is not necessarily the best combo. It's just uh, it, it's just something you can do. Also like. Let me show you something real quick. So if you do combos, some skills will just play out faster if they go after some other skill. So for example here, if I do this and then I do uh, this. Wait, what the fuck? Okay. I think I was still on cooldown or it did, just didn't want to do the, the attack anyway. Let's just wait uh, again. So if, if we do this... And then we do this. It took it took like I don't even know like five seconds, right? But we can also do it the other way around, and it's gonna be significantly faster. If you do this and then this, it just starts the skill a lot faster. It just like flows into it, right? So you need to make sure your um combo is kind of just going at it. In the right order for stuff like this to happen so here i would just go like bam 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 and then boom and i'm done that's a good combo earlier i just did the um, brittle despair like a little bit uh like early i i, I just switched them around i would, that was just stupid i don't know why i did that but uh yeah basically um you you just want to they're, they're also like your combo is also based on your add-ons so i'll explain a little bit about this with the lan example but it's kind of the same for everybody basically you so like you start with uh w like you wf or like uh sorry not wf shift f you'll start with shift f which uh if we if i show you here uh when you do shift f you're gonna get some dp on land on awakening land you get dp if you do shift f after shift f um you are gonna use uh taunting death with the, like this is w right mouse button w right mouse button does this and this gives you all ap plus 16 and if you look at add-ons it also gives us extra damage to humans and biragi has humans in it oh shit those guys can spawn here as well holy fuck well see watch out for that if you're in uh, level four they just can just spawn here so watch out for that um and then after you do the this you want to do like wf and wf has attack and cast speed plus 10 and also like debuffs the enemies why because it covers a long distance so this is a uh, wf right that's uh that's a lot of mobs hit right there even though like uh, Awakening Land AoEs aren't that great though. Uh, then you also got like uh, stuff like uh, left bot left button, right button, uh, which does this. This is also good AoE and it also debuffs. Um, and then you would probably just do either like shift right mouse button like this, right? So you can deal a shit ton of damage. Like, basically, the first hit on that deals a shit ton of damage. So, if you're gonna go behind them like this, and then you're gonna do it once like this, it deals a lot of damage. But don't do it more than, like, let it do this, and then this, and then you're done. That's it. So, like, basically, it smashes the ground twice, and you're done. Everything after that has reduced damage. Um... Four basically is your basic attack. So like this is for you just use it and uh, it deals uh, a good amount of damage. It also heals you if you have frenzy. Uh, you, you can also like um, right here it uh, debuffs the enemies and like you can see it has a good coverage. So right here it just hit every single one of them and now they're debuffed. They have like minus 20 dp. So it's really good um and that's like pretty much it and you can use this as well it's called uh blood moon twist uh which also like blood moon twist also uh covers like a lot of people it's like maximum 10 targets so 
you can also knock down and uh, it, it has down attack and you can get like uh, the buffs from it as well as if you hit all of the targets right so yeah th th those are like some s the way the combo works so, like when you do a combo you're literally thinking about your add-ons and you want to do like stuff for in, in my combo uh, after I do this, I want to do this right after because uh, the second skill is my first add-on, right? Stunting death is giving me extra human damage critical again. And then if I'm using WF, I'm just debuffing everyone. So on my next skill after WF, I'm just literally uh, dealing more damage like right there. So I did WF and I did shift right click and then it just dealt a shit ton of damage because I debuffed the mobs. And I also buffed my attack speed and attack speed works with shift right click. So if you have more attack speed, shift right click goes faster. Uh, also the same for shift left click. Now the general gist of uh, grinding is you use your combo properly. So like here we're doing this. And then we're using like uh if you're killing the mob super fast your combo changes a lot like you no longer have to go through all the spells like you normally do because for example in some cases you don't have to debuff shitty mobs because like there's no point you just go in and kill them like right here i'm doing this and they're literally dead now i go to the next one I, like i don't have to go through six skills to kill those guys Usually it takes like one, two skills, depending on the angle. If I catch them from behind, it's one skill uh, for a lot of them. So those aren't really strong mobs or anything. Like the, the gist of the spot is just go in circles, kill. At some point, the boss spawns. When the boss spawns, just make sure you don't sit around waiting for him. Just go to the next pack. Uh, if he doesn't follow, you just uh, turn around for him. But just don't go too far. It's never worth it to wait for the boss. Never. Just go kill another uh, like pack and then come back for the boss when he spawns. Boss will take a while to spawn. So just make sure you uh, watch out for the alert. If you have like a lot of drop rate and stuff. I've had hours uh, where I spawned like four or five bosses. Uh, so yeah, it can, it can go pretty crazy for sure. Um, right now we just dropped another buff. I didn't I didn't even know what this is basically because of the um, buff and shit. But like right now we got the weapon buff again. Uh, the boss should be spawning soon, and that's pretty much uh, that, that's pretty much it about like how how to grind faster. I know your combo use it in the right order based on like debuffs aoe's and uh like finishers right again so like we got here uh, shift f debuff uh wf debuff and then you got like uh sorry it was w right click and then wf would just uh spin around you debuff every single one of them and with the left click, right click, you just deal a shit ton of damage. So that's like the deal with land. And uh, stuff like that is like pretty much on every single class. Like you have on every single class, you have a, a spell that debuffs them, a spell that buffs you. And then uh, you just combine those and uh, your damaging spell will just be insane. So like here, if I just uh, do this... And then I do the damage skill, which is Brittle Despair. Uh, basically, I'll deal a shit ton of damage on them. And like, since it doesn't really have like, th there's no real mechanic here. You're just fighting the mobs in the in the correct uh, like pattern, and that's it. Just go behind them when you can. Make sure you just uh, hit as many of them as possible with your skills when you hit them. So like here I'm going behind and I'm just trying to catch all of them. Uh, right here, I'm just trying my best to catch all of them, right? Uh, same here. Bam, we got all of them, right? Just try to position yourself to hit as many as possible with the AoE of your skills. That's what you want to do. 
and you can just uh, go like super insanely fast um like some people make like 23 thousand trash here or some shit so yeah the, you you can like the, pretty much no at this point there's no there's which those can like just go pretty high here um but yeah this is basically what how it goes when you're uh grinding at biragi like th those are a few tips that i have for you basically just uh if, if you do everything i said correctly and you got all of the buffs and uh you just popped up everything like the artifacts the um, add-on page against humans if you got a uh, pretty much every single uh crystal uh, I've showed you and stuff basically at that point you should be getting a shit ton more silver than if you just came here and started grinding like with I don't know the stuff you've randomly found out like there there's a good chance a lot of people told you uh, bits by bits and you know everything I mentioned here uh, there's also a good chance you forgot some of the stuff I mentioned so this video might uh, be a good reminder of it uh, but either way, it's uh, if you have all of this together, you just need to know your combo. You just need to position behind them. You just need to position so that your skill hits as many of them as possible. And that's kind of it. Like there's not really much more to it than this. Uh, this spot specifically is just like a basic grind spot. Like there's other spots which have like mechanics. At orcs, you need to watch out for the mage and you need to destroy the little jails. Uh, here is just grind, that's it. Okay, so you've just finished your Biragi Den grind and now you're wondering what's with all this uh, stuff in my inventory. Okay, let me just show you a little bit. So... We're just gonna go to Monster Zone Info, Biragi Den, and now let's talk a little bit about the drops, okay? Let's see what every single one of them is, what does it do, and uh, pretty much just uh, have you like know what you can sell, what you should keep, and so on. So, first of all, we got Trace of Nature. If you drop Trace of Nature, uh, if you're gonna do alchemy or anything like that, just uh, keep it. If you're not gonna do alchemy, keep a little bit of it. So if you if you want to, there's also uh, the choice to put a worker on Lynch Farm Ruins, which is the first node west of Heidel. And uh, right here you get Trace of Nature with the worker. So like, if you do that, you might not even need to uh, do it uh, like with the grinding one. So I get the one you get from grinding, then you can sell it. If you don't put the worker on Lynch Farm, then you can do this. You can keep like 2,000 traces or something at all times on in your like storage or like marketplace. Uh, just in case some stupid recipe requires it. Either that or you can just purchase it from the market whenever it comes, but there might be a chance that you don't find it on the market or it's like pre-order or something I, i'm not sure there there could be a case like uh it's it hasn't been long since the all of the traces got like united into one so i'm not sure if it's gonna eventually run out and there's gonna be pre-orders i i can't guess right now if i'd say it probably not but i just keep a few for like whatever uh just to make sure you know um, second thing, we have the Proof of Reckless Courage. This is the trash loot at Biragi. What do you want to do with this? You just gather as many as possible in one hour, obviously, and then you just sell it to the NPC. This is literally how it goes on every single spot ever. So, I'm pretty sure every single one of you knows at this point. But then, we also got Seed of Void and Narc's Lightning. Now those, like both of those create items that are no longer useful to anybody. Uh, so every single person that grinds in like uh, any Elvia Serendia spot just sells those items. 
so see the void and narc sliding you just sell it to an npc as you can see narc sliding is three million a piece you're gonna probably be getting somewhere around 20 of those and the uh, seed of void is like 10 million a piece and for some reason i'm dropping a lot of the, like a lot more at orcs like it's probably because there's more mages and the mages just have a higher chance to drop seed of void but usually at biragi i get like somewhere between five and ten seed of voids while at orcs sometimes i can get even like 15 so it's uh it's a big difference at orcs with those but you just sell those two to the npc as well now with the uh, shard of the drained knight you just keep them like you want to get as many as possible and keep them you make um cups with those cups are like basically uh added um bonuses to your uh accessories so it requires you can see here it has like four usages uh all of those four usages are basically cup uh, like uh, crafting some cups uh each cup can be used in an accessory there's specific ones that are better than the others this is what the item is for it's valuable i'd say don't throw it away you can sell it on the marketplace and the vendor value is just too small to sell so just keep this and get as many as possible and in the future you might save some money just crafting the cup yourself rather than buying it for 5 billion on the market um then we have uh, those two like there's three keys basically i they're a little bit separated here but you can see it's glimmering treasure key sparkling treasure key and dazzling treasure key now all of those do kind of the same thing except every single one of them has a better uh reward than the other and obviously the dazzling one is the best sparkling is the mid one and glimmering is the worst so like you you're gonna see a lot of glimmering okay uh i rarely ever got dazzling i think i got dazzling only once but i didn't really grind at biragi a lot i think i have like a total maybe of 50 hours at biragi right now um so i don't know it's pretty rare for me at least i was probably unlucky or something i don't even know uh but it's like mostly it's like 40 glimmerings and maybe 10 sparklings in like about 50 hours uh, that's what it, what you should expect it's a it's around there and maybe one dazzling um other than this those keys when you drop them you can right click on them and it will show you where the like uh chest is and uh basically the chest you open it with those keys and you get the rewards based on which key was used uh when opening the chest uh another thing you also have a uh, massive pure magic you can't really do much with this you keep it you make the stones for black star upgrades and fallen god upgrades with this so just keep it keep as many as you can if you start getting like to the hundreds of thousands of those you can probably vendor some i don't know uh but basically the only thing you can do is keep those um with blackstone and sealed black magic crystal those two are very weird so first of all blackstones if you haven't done any jetina pen accessory yet you will need sixteen thousand of those uh then that's only for one accessory you have two accessories so it's like thirty-two thousand blackstones needed in total so you might just want to keep them so you don't have to buy them later especially since if you sell them uh 30 percent is like taken away from you basically um so you would probably want to uh keep them so you don't sell them at a loss and then just buy them for for the difference you know um but say if you don't want to do jetina or you already did it and you're just here to just i don't know figure out biragi better or something well uh in that case you can just sell them this is basically money if there's no use uh, for those for you just i'd say just keep a few of them maybe a thousand which is gonna take you like i don't know a few hours at best to get keep a thousand or two in the bank or like sorry in the storage in the central market 
and you can sell everything else after. Or, or you can just sell absolutely everything and buy when you need. That also works. Uh, if you want a min-max, you're gonna hold on to a few of them. And then, seal black magic crystal as well, you're gonna have to melt a shit ton of those for magical shard. Uh, you will need probably like somewhere close to like uh, 1200 or something, not even sure, probably around there, 1200. So after you get 1200, you can start selling them, um, but like there's a lot of stuff that asks for like magical shards, so we'll see, it really depends, you, you should keep a few of them at least. I'd say just keep 200 of them just to be sure and sell everything after that as well. And then uh, you can also drop a uh, revived lunar necklace. Uh, I'm not sure why. I feel like maybe um, there was th there there was probably an update at some point because there used to be a nail which you would use in order to uh, craft this, but now it seems like it's just a basic drop. And I feel like the reason is because this necklace also dropped in price a lot. So, um, it's, it's quite curious. This is something that I just uh, found out recently. So, uh, it's interesting. And as, as, as I fought here for a little bit the past few days, I haven't dropped one yet. So, I was just super unlucky maybe. But yeah, before there used to be a, an item which you would craft this uh, necklace with. Now, it seems like the necklace is just a drop from the spot so you can also drop this sometimes so yeah this is basically it with the loot i've uh, explained uh, it as as much as i could uh you you choose to do whatever you want based on my explanation with it but um yeah uh the the gist is so here we're gonna talk about like what you should be expecting from this okay First of all, Biragi is not a great spot to grind it. Like, it's it, it's pretty low money. Even the best grinders in the world make a, like, pretty a small amount of money here. Like, uh, I mentioned earlier one of the best PV Novas, Pavel. Uh, I'll also link his uh, crazy ass, uh, like, video uh, down below in the description so you guys can check him out. He's pretty nuts. Uh, but, um, yeah, basically he does somewhere around 23k trash loot here, which is crazy. And, uh, the thing is, like, he pulls 23k, but, like, the total money is still, like, at an average orc hour level. So, like, at orcs you get around 700, 800 mil an hour, maybe even more, depends on your luck. Um, while here you get like 800 or like 700 something if you're tryharding, okay? <laughs> like if you're literally just doing the best of the best. So, it's like, I don't really recommend this for money. Maybe if you want to grind your cups, uh, you can just grind here, it's fine. Uh, the amount of shards dropped are, is not too bad. I'd say this is like one of the better spots. Even though I, I choose Bloody Monastery, but that's a lot harder. So, I feel like rather than Bloody Monastery, it's better to do Biragi if you're not ready, like, with your gear score. So, I'd say you should expect to, like, make somewhere around, like, 500 mil here. Uh, at least in the beginning. Uh, with all of the items sold and stuff, and with the trash loot. And uh, you just go up from there. And the maximum you can reach is probably like 800 mil right now. Um, and that's, it's like, again, if you're sweating, okay? Uh, in the beginning, I, I'm thinking you might get somewhere like 15k trash loot. It's, it's okay if you do less, if you do like 13k, if it's your first hour or something. Uh, you want to grow uh, somewhere to like uh, 15, 16, 17k, you know, slowly. And like the biggest, uh, like, how should I say this? The biggest hurdle is getting past like 18k. Like once you get to 18k, it gets like significantly harder. And uh, personally, my best pull here was uh, 
pretty close. It was like 19.3. And uh, 19.3 might sound crazy for some. But it's actually not even that crazy. I think like uh, the average is like 20k. Like I, I didn't really try hard it too much. I don't even have the like human crystals and stuff. Uh, at that time when I tried it, I didn't have the human add-ons either. But uh, I think like 20k is all right. Just like it, it just gets like absolutely insane when we're talking about like 22, 23k where it feels like even impossible like at least for awakening lan i don't think awakening lan can pull uh 23k here maybe i don't know but i i doubt it but anyway like that's that's what you should expect you should not expect to reach 23k uh you should expect to be somewhere between 15k and 20k and everything that's under 15k just watch the uh, parts with the buffs listen to my explanations and try your best to follow them and gather some info about your class in the class discord you need to join the class discord because there's again 50 classes in the game and it's really hard for me to give advice on 50 classes like i can just give awakening lan maybe succession lan advice to some degree but uh, everything on other classes is gonna be like absolute nuts. Also, don't get discouraged when others uh, say they make like a shit ton of trash here and there. Like I said in the previous video, some people love to brag. A lot of them lie. Some of them don't, but it's it really doesn't matter. This game is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Just do things at your own pace and you will be fine. Also, um this video was uh requested by this guy we have him in the comment here basically um if you guys want anything explained you want any sort of guide on anything you can just ask in the comments below i'll uh, try my best to answer to questions i'll try my best to like make videos on like complicated topics um next video is probably gonna be about giants it's not gonna be this long because i'm just gonna use pretty much uh I i'm just gonna use this video as reference so, like this video is super long i got every single info that i wanted in there uh so from here on basically on giants it would be just a lot of repeating myself you know so on on the next video with giants i'll just uh pretty much show what the elixirs are i'll reference this video and most likely i'll just show the rotation explain how uh, the mechanics go and it's probably gonna be like at least half as uh, long um also if you found the video helpful maybe you want to leave a like uh you can subscribe as well if you want to catch the next video uh, and you know maybe ring that bell notification just in case so you don't miss out on the next uh, upload and uh, i guess uh, i'll see you guys on the next one bye bye